Fighting games. Who doesn't love them? There have been so many renditions of fighting games over the years, and for all of them, the objective is basically the same. Whether you're a pro who spends countless hours memorizing combos and techniques, or a casual who likes to spam that one move, your end goal is to beat the crap out of your opponent. Today, we're going to witness neither of those strategies. This is Stupid Crap Face, the fighter who refuses to fight. Welcome to the Fumble Dimension. Stupid crap face is our crash test dummy, violently ragdolling in the driver's seat of the jalopy we call human ethics, along the bumpy road we call human existence. Previously in Fumble Dimension, we cloned hundreds of copies of stupid crap face to populate the entire NBA and destroy basketball forever. But this time, he's not out to destroy. His only desire is to maintain his existence, fill a little bit of space in the universe, and to keep his head, arms, and legs in the same place the Lord put him. MMA is beautiful to me. Is it institutionally flawed? Extremely so, yes, but it's an outlet through which we can satisfy our primal desire to fight, whether directly or by proxy. And by doing so in a controlled environment with at least some emphasis on safety and sportsmanship, I'd consider it a far more morally upright exercise than all the violence outside the octagon we're told is heroic and justified. Still, radical pacifism is such a compelling concept, and it's the one stupid crap face we'll explore today. You can call him weak, you can call him a coward, in the tiny world of the octagon, that might be what he is. But though you can cut his lights off with a right hook or stick his elbow in an armbar, you will never strike his spirit. You will never find it. It lives well above you, on a plane you can never reach. Story modes in sports video games have always been an interesting topic to me. I know this because I made three videos in 2018 that no one asked for. I'm bringing this up because today we'll be testing the limits of UFC 4's career mode. There's probably a term for this, but I'm going to say that we're looking at a game's career mode flexibility, taking a look at how many situations a career mode is actually prepared for, if at all. A good example of different career mode flexibilities are the two long shot modes that Madden tried to do. In the first Madden long shot, you were a five-star QB that quit football in college. He tries to get back into the NFL by going on a reality TV show called Long Shot in hopes of getting drafted. The choices you make throughout the story affect your draft grade and at the end you either get drafted or have to watch your friend get drafted while you go unsigned. It was impossible to truly ruin your last chance to play in the NFL, however, as even if you go undrafted, you still get a call from a team asking you to work out for them. Which I understand because not getting drafted or a phone call would be fucking sad but it would also be a super realistic ending. Now in Longshot Homecoming, you really don't have any choices to make. You finish the story mode the way they intended you to and everyone goes home happy except for me. Kofi, why are you bringing this up? Well, because today we're putting stupid crap based in UFC 4 story mode, which like FIFA and Madden have some cutscenes and are made by EA. What could possibly go wrong? So what exactly do you think will happen. We're not going to be throwing a punch. We're not going to be kicking. I, I got I have no idea what's going to happen here. I don't have predictions. I have hopes and dreams for stupid crap face because I genuinely care about his well-being. And what I hopefully predict is that he can go a long time without throwing a punch and receiving one. Like, I think I've told you about the Shamrock vs. Severn fight in like UFC 8 a while back. And uh, that was the famous one where sanctions were put on the fight like hours beforehand. And the state like would not allow the fighters, neither Shamrock nor Severn, to throw a punch. if They, they had to be like open-handed slaps. Um, and as a result, they didn't know how to fight anymore. It's literally 10 minutes of them like circling around each other and just staring. And eventually the ref has to break them up and everybody's booing. And uh, it was it's regarded as the worst fight of all time. That is where stupid crap things could truly excel. But I don't see that happening. And oh, honestly, I'm kind of afraid. Our story starts with two people, stupid crap face and Coach Davis, who first sees an amateur fight and stupid crap face getting his ass kicked. We are then thrown into the fire as we just escaped the round. We're outmatched and need to make it to the bell to have a chance. 
Stupid Crapface decides to stick to the only strategy he knows, bobbing and weaving. Is that, is that bobbing and weaving? It kind of looks like he's just human button mashing. Anyway, it doesn't work. That doesn't stop Coach Davis, however, who's so impressed with our resolve that he decides to take us on as clients. Seeing that our only quality is never give up, we have no choice. I can make like 48 different anime references in this video, but I will show restraint. Coach Davis then takes us to a studio where we must learn about fighting from the ground up. The first lesson is punching. UFC 4 has a very detailed skill move list, and we're not going to be using any of them. Our coach keeps giving us words of encouragement even after 15 minutes of us doing absolutely nothing. Come on, go, go, go! <laughs> Our next lesson is blocking, which we surprisingly pass with ease. The lesson after that is leaning strikes. He's not that good at those. Stupid crap face bobs and weaves so much that it eventually drains all of his stamina reserves. <laughs> Coach decides to call practice. It's time to save our energy for our first fight against Alan Farley. In MMA and boxing, fans use the term tomato can to refer to any fighter they've shoved out there who's perceived to have no chance, just to bulk up his opponent's record and let him get some hits in. It's a pretty brutish and disrespectful thing to call somebody. You're gonna get hit over and over and over until red stuff leaks out of you, hence tomato can. The way it used to be, your first opponent in any video game was always a jobber like that. But the days of Glass Joe from Mike Tyson's Punch Out are gone. Alan Farley isn't even an obscure low-level fighter, he's a completely fictitious one. And he's tuning Mr. Crapface up. Farley could at least leave us the dignity of surviving into the second round, but he doesn't. With 10 seconds left in the first, it's nap time. Oh god, we're the tomato can. After getting the shit kicked out of us for the second time in a row, the coach tries to teach us and give us some words of encouragement. We learn takedowns in practice. We try to learn takedowns in practice. In the end, it all comes down to who wants it more, right? Which fighter's gonna keep grinding until the other one quits? I know you're not a quitter and I got you a chance to prove it against another amateur opponent. A decent wrestler, but you got what it takes to win. <laughs> Y'all yeah, take a look at Crap Face's stamina bar real quick. <laughs> we lose in fifty eight seconds. Your striking is better than theirs. Yeah. Your ground game is better than theirs. Yeah. Your coach is better looking than theirs. Maybe. <laughs> you come a long way. All right, you win this one, you got a shot at the contender series. Then the fun really starts. You hungry? Yeah. Then let's go. <sighs> In the final amateur fight, we actually showed improvement by surviving a round. Mid-second round, stupid crap face gets a little bored and decides to taunt his opponent. We survive the second round barely. Stupid crap face has learned to manage his chakra, I mean stamina, by rationing out his bobbing and weaving. Now we still lost, but at least we survived a round. And now, after all of this, our fate is sealed. We've been invited to the World Fight Alliance. We also have a big decision to make. Do we play on easy mode or legendary mode? Would this be a fumble dimension if we didn't choose legendary mode? No. 
We start off our career with $30,000. If I was stupid crap face, I would take the money and run. But that's just me. We also have 10 fans and a fight offer. But first, it's time to use our purple star thingies to improve our players' abilities. We decide to bolster his blocking footwork and cardio so that he can actually have a chance in legendary mode. Our first fight is offering $6,000 for just showing up. Hell yeah. And to cut down on gym fees, we'll be setting the fight to a week from now. Our coach reminds us that it's good to build a positive relationship with fighters, but to also sometimes talk a little shit so the fans think we're edgy and cool. I also like how he starts off our messages with, hey, stupid. <laughs> Now we're here for a good time, not a long time, so it's time to taunt some fighters. We also promote the crap out of this fight, and the hype goes from very low to very low. The fight is here. Kofi is getting pretty irresponsible with the taunt button if you ask me. Our hero's face is getting kneaded like pizza dough. But this is what troubles me most. We've got an info box that tells us we're seeing stars. Okay, fine, but are they trying to simulate concussion-like confusion by immediately slapping a second info box on top of it? What are we supposed to get out of this, Electronic Arts? They also disappear at almost the exact same time. These are like the endless pop-up ads you experience when you're watching bootleg live streams, which, to be fair, is the definitive UFC experience. We make $5,400 and lose four fans. We suffer a minor injury, seeing stars, and a concussion, which requires us to sit out for 270 days. We also seem to have gone viral. Our coach tells us that we have the option to turn down fights and that we don't have to live like this. We understand. The injury has also reduced our chin strength and recovery. Next up is Noel Valencia which if you've been paying attention is the same person that we taunted on social media 270 days ago. One thing I will say is that if we're going to do one thing right, it's taunt on Twitter. Maybe they'll make a beef history video on us one day. We're not going to do that. We promote the fight and again earn four fans. I see why we ended the last time with 10 now. In our match with Noel, Super Crapface hears the audience laughing. He realizes that the audience loves his taunting. Noel gets sick of our shit and gives Stupid Crapface his second concussion in as many fights. The game awards us the achievement of becoming rivals with Noel. The concussion knocks us out for another 270 days. Yay! So after talking shit to Noel Valencia, we we got a concussion and a 270 day suspension. And I don't even think that's the worst part about this. The worst part is that he didn't even like talk shit and tweet at us afterwards. He just like pretended that we weren't even worth his time anymore. And that's the more insulting thing to me. That's that that hurts my feelings a little bit, because like in, in this scenario, you and I are both kind of stupid crap face here. He's our stand in and like I would like to think that if someone beat my ass, they would at least be proud of it. Also, why did they have to call it a suspension? Like, like, like we did something bad. Oh, you got your ass beat. Uh, <laughs> we are going to punish you for being bad at this. Like, couldn't they say like a medical leave or yeah, something like that? Yeah, leave of absence. No, it's a medical suspension. And I think that 270 days is the max. I feel like after two consecutive concussions, we should be out for longer. Also, just call it nine months. We have a concussion. Are you going to make us count to 270? <laughs> <laughs> Our next fight is against Chiago Morais. We again gain four fans from promotion. After a long time in the fight with no action, the crowd starts booing. This is what the fans paid to see. We survive a round, and then we get obliterated. We suffer four injuries, including another concussion. 
in addition to a major head injury. How much will EA allow? Well, they'll at least allow us another fight contract. The only difference is that we're making less money per fight this time. I feel like this is either a supplier demand thing or the game telling us to try harder. I wonder who could possibly be our next fight. Oh boy. Valencia again. We suffer a bruised rib two leg contusions, and a meniscus tear. And we're only in round one, guys. In round two, we tear our ACL. The fight lasted seven minutes and 16 seconds. And for stupid crap face, that must have felt like an eternity. We're given another 270 day medical suspension. All right, so our second bout with Valencia, we get a bruised rib, two leg contusions, seeing stars, a meniscus tear, and an ACL tear, and a another 270 day suspension. Okay, so the last one wasn't an injury. It's just, well, no. it's insult on top of injury, so. Yeah, seven. so that counts. I think I'd retire. Yeah, I absolutely think I would. I would take the $44 that I think we've won at this point and <laughs> go like, I guess, retire to the woods where I would like try to build a fort with like a tarp and a couple of like sticks I found and like probably die in like 18 days. That's, yeah, that would be that would be my future. Can't show your face in public. Nope. That's Absolutely sure. not. Yeah. Don't even have a face at this point. <laughs> This is so, this is the most grim episode of Fumble Dimension yet. Yeah. And you I got fired last episode. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I would <laughs> rather be fired. <laughs> God, I would love to be fired. I would love for Stupid Crap Face to be fired by someone. That's his problem. There's no one to tell him no. Yeah. He just keeps getting new contracts. This is like just the circle of hell, honestly. Yeah. After three more concussions, we're given another fight contract. This time it's for three fights, but at least it's the same price, right? There's one hope stupid crap face can cling to. Maybe he's not real. Maybe he's just a character in a badly misremembered anecdote. A couple things support this possibility. For one, he's fighting in the World Fighting Alliance, which ended operations 15 years ago. For another, this B-League promotion is being officiated by Herb Dean, the most high-profile ref in the entire world of MMA. None of this makes sense. So maybe this isn't real. Maybe this isn't happening to him. So you're telling me that the World Fighting Alliance doesn't even exist anymore? No, and I actually had to look this up because I don't remember it at all. Apparently, it was like some B-League promotion that the UFC bought in 2006. Um, and then uh, they just basically took all the fighters from it and folded it. And the Contender Series is above the World Fight Alliance. So we don't even make the Contender Series at first. We make the World Fighting Alliance. So now we're not even in the minor league we're in the minor minor league which is it's, which is weird it's such an anachronism right like it's just, yeah we're in like an imaginary purgatory like imagine if uh you were watching a tv show that was set in the present day and the characters are watching like upn you're like <laughs> <laughs> we're zero and seven but only two spots below our rival noel valencia Interesting. It seems that the game arranges all the unranked fighters by alphabetical order, so technically we don't know what the standings truly are outside of the ranks. This is what I would tweet at Valencia if the game would let me. The game's not letting me tweet at him. 
Stupid Crap Face's career routine is more of the same. Pick a fight, hype up the crowd for four new fans, and get our ass kicked to lose those four fans. For 99% of the fighters, this would be considered our prime years. But for Stupid Crap Face, it's an everlasting plateau. His skills never improving. The result never changing. No one has tweeted at us in nine years. I haven't heard from my coach in eight years. We are truly fighting in the age of loneliness. So, no one has tweeted at us, and it's been, I don't know, eight seasons. Our coach doesn't contact us, but he shows up to fight because you can hear his voice giving like words of encouragement in the background. And then when you get knocked out, there's like a cutscene, and he's like briefly there looking over your knocked out body. <laughs> So he, so he knows that we exist. He doesn't contact us. He just shows up to the fight and is just like, ah, knocked out again. Oh, and then disappears <laughs> again. Like, I, this is just so bizarre. I'm sorry. This is, ugh. You know, Cyberpunk 2077 has received enormous criticism for the state of the game it released, but you know what? There's something to be said for aiming high and falling short. Meanwhile, can you think of a game with fewer moving parts than a UFC game? Two fighters and a ref in a canvas, that's it. And they can't even pull that off. There's no ref. Stupid Crabface literally has to fall asleep so he can dream him into existence. After 13 fights, we finally have our first fight that doesn't end in a concussion. We lose another way. We only had to sit out 90 days instead of our usual 270. I call that progress. Fight 15. We're feeling good after suffering only minor injuries in the last fight. We're ready to take on whoever wants it. It's the best we've felt in years. Our next opponent is... F fuck, Valencia again? Despite all the beef we have with this guy, the game still won't let me tweet at him. Maybe I'll send him a letter. We suffer nine injuries, which takes out our longevity by 30.6%. To put it nicely, he's fucking our shit up. Now, Stupid Crap Face has gotten older, but not wiser. As I'm changing his facial hairstyle, the game decides to shut down on me, as if my PS5 wants us to stop the fighting. But we press on and face David Gardner for the second time. He looks really similar to our sparring partner, but he can't be him because he's 24 and that session was over 10 years ago, right? Gardner has improved since last time, we have him. We end up with 10 injuries and lose 54% of our longevity. This looks like it's going to be the end of Stupid Crap Face's career. Just kidding, he got a four match contract. For our next match, we accidentally agree to five weeks in training for the fight and we get injured in training. Suddenly concerned about our injury, our coach texts us for the first time in who knows how many years to ask us if he wants to back out of this fight. We don't chicken out and instead choose the fans and the glory. We get 400 fans, 400 new people to watch us and cheer on crap face. We lose in the submission. We lose 404 fans. Our longevity is all the way gone. It looks like we're going to have to retire Stupid Crap Face's fighting career for good. That is, until we get a message from the game. Saying that, yeah, it's time to call it quits, but we get one last fight. Make it one to remember. Stupid Crap Face lets out one last taunt. And just like that, a career is over. 
stupid crap face loses in 10 seconds. But he left his career the same way he began it. With a concussion. Now it's seriously time to call it quits. The reason? Longevity damage. And that's, that's the career mode, guys. There is nothing left I can do on this screen. No coming out of retirement. No heartfelt goodbye from the coach that believed in us. No cutscenes whatsoever. It's just stupid crap face and his 10 loyal fans. We have to look at these stupid crap face stats in a specific light because today we're not looking at if he lost, but how he lost. Every fight gave us the same result, but how we got there is a different story every time. For most of the fights, we didn't make it out of the first round, and we'd escape with minor injuries and a concussion. But there is one opponent that stands out. We have to talk about Noel Valencia again. In the Noel Valencia fight, Stupid Crapface took 41 hits, 75 hits, and then 80 hits respectively. But the more interesting part about these fights are the time. In the first fight, Valencia took 4 minutes and 18 seconds. In the second fight, he took 7 minutes and 16 seconds. And in the third go round, he took 7 minutes and 28 seconds. These times stand out because they last longer than most of the other fights. Hell, we even had a fight that lasted 10 seconds. These long drawn out fights tell us that this was more than business. This shit was personal. And we can further tell by the injuries. In the three Valencia fights, Stupid Crap Face endured three counts of seeing stars, a bruised rib, four leg contusions, two meniscus tears, a torn ACL, a damaged orbital, and two concussions. Our tweets from the early years stayed in the back of Noel's mind for years and years, and in our matches, he toyed with us, prolonged the torture as if to get his long, drawn-out payback, even though we've never been in his league to begin with. And that, my friends, is one of the pettiest things I've ever seen from a sports video game character. I'm so glad we don't have to fight him again. So that's it. Oh wait, that's it? We're it's done? Yeah, we're retired. We we lose up all of our longevity. So that's it. I don't feel very retired. No. Yeah, that story mode ended so awkwardly. Uh, we don't know how to end the video. So to stay up to date with Fumble Dimension, follow me and John on Twitter. And we also have more Fumble Dimension conveniently located in the box below. Yay! Bye. <laughs>